Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 4 StarCraft 2 Strategy. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Zerg strategy. Now in this replay, our Zerg player is Damaga, and our Protoss opponent is White Raw. I'm going to go right into Damaga Vision here. So again, this is a Zerg strategy that we're looking at today. Uh, more importantly, we're going to be looking at good reactionary play. We're going to be looking at scouting your opponent, um, getting intel, getting information as to what they're doing, and then responding properly. Uh, so we're going to be looking at a pretty basic build as Zerg. It's going to be a, a pretty quick expansion, pretty fast expansion, and then using speedlings uh, to protect us early on and to provide us with some sort of map control. But when we see that our Protoss opponent's going for that four gate early game push, um, we're going to respond by getting a Banelings nest, getting out some Banelings, uh, and then we're also going to be looking at a proc proper attacking uh, and unit positioning when it comes to engagements as Zerg. It's really important as Zerg, uh, especially with sp units such as the Speedling, to get a surround on your opponents. And you can do this properly by spreading out your uh, units, spreading your army out in multiple positions, and then engaging at once from multiple angles. So we're going to be taking a good look at that as well. So starting things out here, uh, this is something that you're going to see a lot of Zerg players do. A lot of Zerg players feel most comfortable going for a, a quick expansion, an early game expansion. Now what we're going to be seeing here is we're going to be going for that uh, expansion at 16 supply. That's when we're going to be moving out and dropping our hatchery. Now the reason being, obviously, uh, Zerg functions off of their larva, and having that extra base is going to allow you to have more larva, and basically it's just going to drastically increase the uh, possible production that you have of units. Also, of course, getting that expansion is going to give you that extra, um, those extra resources, that extra gathering ability, uh, increasing your economy. Obviously, there's no need to describe why that's beneficial. Uh, having more money is going to allow you to produce more units and be at a better advantage than your opponent is. So as far as the spawning pool and extractor are concerned, again, that hatchery did go down at 16 supply. Then at 15 supply, we dropped our spawning pool. Immediately after, at 14, we dropped our extractor. So basically, between getting this hatchery and getting the spawn pool extractor, there is no more unit production. It's just one after the other. Now, as soon as the extractor comes up, we do want to saturate it. We are going to want to get that speedling upgrade very quickly, as quick as possible. Uh, not moving any drones off of our line to do any scouting, we actually decided to just go with this Overlord Scout. Uh, something I do want to say about that, y yes, this is good. You can still get good scouting information with your Overlord. The only thing I would say is that if your opponent was going for an early two gate, you may not see it uh, in time. You may not see it soon enough if you just bring out this Overlord because the Overlord is so slow and it does take it so long to get to your opponent. So something to think about if you're worried about a two gate push, you may want to send a drone pretty early. Uh, now that we do have our two our two hatcheries up, so we do have this expansion up. We are going to be getting those two queens. We started building our first queen at 18 supply. Second one started coming at 21 supply. Um, also, now that we have reached 100 Vespian gas, we are going to start researching that metabolic boost there again, getting that speed upgrade for our Zerglings. Now, we do see at this point that there is a sentry in the board, so we do know that he's got some units. Uh, as of now, we do feel pretty comfortable just with these queens that we have. Uh, that should be suffice it. It should be should be enough, sufficient enough, not sufficient enough. That's not a word. Oh man, I almost stopped right there. I figured I'd keep going though. Don't really want to do this over. So we do have our uh, evolution chamber coming down as well. Purpose being, we're gonna get that level one upgrade to. Uh, increase the damage output of our zerglings that's going to help us drastically now again we did see that sentry on the board so in preparation for any possible push we're going to be coming out with some zerglings right now as well um, just starting researching that level one upgrade so you know we went for this fast expansion obviously we're vulnerable to early pressure getting scouting information really good something else i would suggest that we don't see actually okay just right now are finally getting getting that zergling out to that zel naga tower whenever you get the chance try to make sure you have control of those zel naga towers getting that uh just the 20 15 second advantage to see that your opponent's coming is going to help you a ton that those few extra seconds is really just enough for you to prepare properly. Um, so whenever you get the chance, have control of these Zel Naga Towers to be prepared for any early push. For example, right here, we went over to the Zel Naga Tower and we saw, oh crap, there's a bunch of sentries and a zealot coming our way. We're going to be responding in turn by coming out with a ton of zerglings. Uh, because if he is pushing out right now, we're going to need that defense. So that just this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Uh, being prepared and being... Uh, 
able to respond properly to what your opponent's doing, also known as reactionary play. We saw that he was coming, we started mass producing these Zerglings, also we're going to be dropping our Banelings Nest. As far as exact supply there, we went with that at 49 supply. Uh, but that's not so important, the exact number, as it is why we got it and when we got it. We saw that that sentry and zealot heavy army was coming towards us, so again, we started massing up these zerglings. Dropping that banelings nest is going to do very well, getting those banelings um, into the face of those light units, those zealots and those sentries. They can be very, very effective. Uh, and then also we're going to see here, again, what I mentioned earlier, um, spreading out your units properly and engaging properly. Um, so we do see that this push is in fact coming. Again, we have been reconfirmed that sentries and zealots are what we're going to be seeing. So now that our banelink nest is up, we're going to be morphing in some banelings. Um, also, again, starting with that spread of our units. We'll see that in just one second. Uh, but luckily with these creep tumors, something that's very advantageous is that we do get a lot of vision of the map here. So spreading out our units in two forces, moving the zerglings behind and then engaging from the back, uh, that allowed us to get that vital surround. And I mean, as you can see, just that one engagement was enough to make our Protoss opponent call a good game. Uh, splitting up your forces as Zerg is so so vital because Zerglings, they obviously they do their damage um, best when they can surround units. So pushing down with our Banelings and hitting him in the front, and then swinging our Zerglings behind him and engaging him from the back. That's what it was. It, that's what allowed us to take out that force so very quickly and with such ease. And again, as you can see, just from that one engagement, our Protoss opponent calls the game. We're going to take a look at the view here. Um, had we pushed out right now, we would have been able to do a ton of damage. He could have blocked off, you know. He could have got a sentry or two up to try to force field us, but that was such a heavy loss for him, and it was so one-sided that it was just too much, and he decided to call good game. So we're going to go over that build order real quick, what we're looking at here. Uh, we started off with that fast expansion at 16 supply. And then at 15 supply, we dropped our spawning pool. And at 14, we went that, with that extractor. Now at 18 supply, we went ahead and we got our first queen. And then at 21, we got our second queen. Obviously, with these two hatcheries, we do want two queens to keep up on that spawn larva ability. 25 supply, we went ahead and got our metabolic boost. Having that speed upgrade is very beneficial for the Zerglings. Uh, it allows you to maintain map control. It also allows you to just provide a constant threat to your opponent. They're always worried about leaving their base for fear of Zerglings running straight into their base and devastating their mineral line. We also got that Evolution Chamber 28 supply. At 32 supply, once that was up, we went ahead and started researching uh, that level 1 upgrade. Again, increasing the effectiveness and the damage output from our Zerglings. And then the most important thing to really know is having that scouting information, having control of these Del Naga Towers, and then responding. When you see your opponent pushing out, uh, make sure you increase your production, get some more units out. Also, if you see a force that something within your immediate grasp, uh, some sort of upgrade or some sort of tech is going to help you deal with, then go ahead and go for that. For example, we saw a really light force of sentries and zealots, so since all we needed was a banelings nest, uh, and we already had the zerglings obviously, we went ahead and dropped that, we got those banelings out before he engaged, and we were able to quite handedly deal with his army. So again guys, this has been for StarCraft 2 strategy. If you guys like our videos and you like what you see, please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Keep watching and keep owning guys. They just have these mutilists uh, finished creating, so we are going to be able to use them as well. And what you're going to see again is kind of spreading them out. We don't want them in one big group when they engage. Uh, this is a very hard push from our Terran opponent. It's going to be very difficult to deal with. We do want to wait till they're a little bit closer um, to these Banelings, and that way we can move in with them as soon as they're done.